Sir Ebenezer Howard slash Eribnizer unregistered trademark Ari hash unregistered trademark AD slash OBE The English founder of the Garden City movement is known for his publication Tomorrow, A Peaceful Path to Real Reform, the description of a utopian city in which people live harmoniously together with nature. The publication resulted in the founding of the Garden City movement, and the building of the first Garden City, Letchworth Garden City, commenced in 1903. The second true Garden City was well in Garden City and the movement influenced the development of several model suburbs in other countries, such as Forest Hills Gardens designed by F. L. Olmsted Jr. in 1909, Radburn N.J. and the suburban resettlement program towns of the 1930s. Howard aimed to reduce the alienation of humans and society from nature, and hence advocated Garden Cities and Geogism. Howard is believed by many to be one of the great guides to the town planning movement, with many of his garden city principles being used in modern town planning. Family members, his great-granddaughter is the actor, dancer and TV personality Una Stubbs. Other direct descendants of Howard include his cricket manager grandson Jeffrey Howard, as well as another great-granddaughter, the poet and publisher Joy Bernadine Howard. Following the death of his wife Eliza Ann Bills in 1907 he married Edith Annie Hayward, who ended her days as Edith, Lady Howard, and with whom he is buried in Letchworth Cemetery. Early life, Howard was born in Four Street, City of London, the son of Ebenezer Howard, a baker, and Anne. He was sent to schools in Suffolk and Hertfordshire. Howard left school at 15 and began working as a stenographer in London. Howard subsequently had several clerical jobs, including one with Dr. Parker of the City Temple. In 1871, at the age of 21, influenced partly by a farming uncle, Howard emigrated with two friends to America. He went to Nebraska, and after his farming efforts failed, discovered he did not wish to be a farmer. He then relocated to Chicago and worked as a reporter for the courts and newspapers. In the U.S., he became acquainted with and admired, poets Walt Whitman and Ralph Waldo Emerson. Howard began to ponder ways to improve the quality of life. Later life, by 1876 he was back in England, where he found a job with Hamzid Company, which produces the official verbatim record of Parliament, and he spent the rest of his life in this occupation. Howard's time in Parliament exposed him to ideas about social reform, and helped inspire his ideas for the Garden City. In August 1879 he married Eliza Ann Bills. Howard has been described as a humble and practical inventor who used his spare time to create outlines of new cities. It was the social milieu of the 1800s which led Howard to consider the social problems of the time and try to find alternatives. Howard mingled with free thinkers, anarchists and socialists, groups which were revolutionists and reformers, these ideas greatly influenced Howard. Influences and Ideas Howard read widely, including Edward Bellamy's 1888 utopian novel, Looking Backward, and Henry George's economic treatise, Progress and Poverty, and thought much about social issues. He disliked the way modern cities were being developed and thought people should live in places that should combine the best aspects of both cities and the countryside. While there is no direct evidence of Howard reading Marx, Many of Marx's critiques and ideas about the downfall of society, capitalism, industrialism and the political economy influenced the people who Howard drew inspiration from. Publications The only publication he wrote in his life was titled Tomorrow, A Peaceful Path to Real Reform, which was significantly revised in 1902 as Garden Cities of Tomorrow. Garden Cities of Tomorrow was based on ideas of social and urban reform. Garden cities were to avoid the downfalls of industrial cities of the time such as urban poverty, overcrowding, low wages, dirty alleys with no drainage, poorly ventilated houses, toxic substances, dust, carbon gases, infectious disease and lack of interaction with nature. This book offered a vision of towns free of slums and enjoying the benefits of both town and country. He illustrated the idea with his famous Three Magnets diagram which addressed the question, where will the people go? The choices being town, country or town-country. 
Garden Cities of Tomorrow proposed that society be reorganized with networks of garden cities that would break the stronghold of capitalism and lead to cooperative socialism. It proposed the creation of new suburban towns of limited size, planned in advance, and surrounded by a permanent belt of agricultural land. These garden cities were used as the model for many suburbs. Howard believed that such garden cities were the perfect blend of city and nature. Howard believed that a new civilization could be found by marrying the town and the country. The towns would be largely independent, managed by the citizens who had an economic interest in them, and financed by ground rents on the Georgist model. The land on which they were to be built was to be owned by a group of trustees and leased to the citizens. While many believe the diagrams and designs in Howard's Garden Cities of Tomorrow to be a physical plan for the perfect garden city, Howard notes these to be merely suggestive as each city should be planned to be organized as per the needs of the people and their environment. Howard never intended for garden cities to be circular like his diagrams. Action In 1899 he founded the Garden Cities Association, known now as the Town and Country Planning Association. By his association with Henry Harvey Vivian and the co-partnership housing movement his ideas attracted enough attention and funding to begin Letchworth Garden City, a suburban garden city 37 miles north of London. A second garden city, well in Garden City, was started after World War I. His acquaintance with German architects Hermann Muthesius and Bruno Taut resulted in the application of humane design principles in many large housing projects built in the Weimar Republic. Hermann Muthesius also played an important role in the creation of Germany's first garden city of Hellerau in 1909, the only German garden city where Howard's ideas were thoroughly adopted. The creation of Letchworth Garden City and Wellen Garden City were influential for the development of new towns after World War II by the British government. This produced more than 30 communities, the first being Stevenage, Hertfordshire, and the last being Milton Keynes, Buckinghamshire. Howard's ideas also influenced other planners such as Frederick Law Olmsted II and Clarence Perry. Walt Disney used elements of Howard's concepts in his original design for EPCOT. In 1913 Howard founded the Garden Cities and Town Planning Association a Euro presently the International Federation for Housing and Planning. Its goal was to promote the concept of planned housing and to improve the general standard of the profession by the international exchange of knowledge and experience. Howard was an enthusiastic speaker of Esperanto, often using the language for his speeches. Howard is buried in a modest grave in Letchworth Cemetery with his second wife Edith Annie, Lady Howard. Letchworth Garden City Letchworth was developed and owned by a company called First Garden City, Limited, which was formed in 1903, based on the ideas of Howard. After Howard's book was published, he worked to gain financial support to bring his ideas into reality. Howard ran lectures on garden cities and began the Garden City Association. The Garden City Association collected money from supporters, his supporters tended to be people who were impressed by the social justice element of the Garden City. The Letchworth Estate, which was agricultural land, was purchased from 15 individual owners. The Letchworth estate lies on a train line and is only 35 miles from London, making commuting possible. The original land on which Letchworth was built cost the first garden city, limited a £160, and covered 38 26 acres. However, more land was purchased and the property increased to 47 10 acres. The Letchworth Garden City was to sustain a population of between 30,000 and 35,000 people, and would be laid out as Howard explained in his book. There would be a central town, agricultural belt, shops, factories, residences, civic centers and open spaces. This division of land for specific purposes is now referred to as zoning and is an important practice within town planning. Howard constructed Letchworth as an example of how the Garden City could be achieved and hoped that in its success many other towns would be built emulating the same ideals. Some criticisms of Letchworth exist, claims it to too spacious and there are few architecturally impressive designs. However, it can be argued the space is what makes Letchworth pleasant, and the architecture, while not highly impressive and uniform, has consistency of color and is satisfying to the needs of the people.
Wallin Garden City. Wallin was an area of woodlands and open fields before the Garden City was constructed. Wallin was Howard's second Garden City after Letchworth. Howard purchased the land with a £5,000 borrowed from friends. Wellin is only 20 miles from London, and captured the charm of the countryside and managed to stay unspoiled by urbanisation. The architecture in Wellin has been described as pleasant, and the residential cottages with their wide roads and open spaces make Wellin a refreshing picture when compared to London of the time. After ten years of existence Wellin had a population of 10,000, with well-established residential, industrial and commercial zones. In 1930 the health of Wellin inhabitants was considered greater than those living in London, as Wellin recorded lower death rates and infant mortality rates. The increased health in Wellin was understood to be due to the principles of the Garden City. It could be argued that Wellin fell short of Howard's ideals, Howard wanted investors to invest for the sake of philanthropy, but investors wanted returns and local democracy failed with an exclusive government group formed. Finally. Wellin was marketed as a middle-class commuter suburb, entirely disrespecting the Garden City ideals of a self-reliant city. Honours, Howard was appointed an Officer of the Order of the British Empire in 1924 and a Knight Bachelor in 1927. See also, Clarence Stein, Garden City Movement, Letchworth Garden City, Wellin Garden City, International Federation for Housing and Planning. References External links, Sir Ebenezer Howard and the Garden City Movement, Town and Country Planning Association, Ebenezer Howard at DMOZ, Garden Cities of Tomorrow at archive.org, International Federation for Housing and Planning.